Glory to Jesus Christ. Slava Jesus Christ. We have entered into one of the fast seasons of the, uh, the Holy Church. We're in the fast season now of the Dormition, in preparation for uh, the Feast of the Dormition. And I had a couple of questions of, uh, last week that someone brought to me, and I thought it might be worthwhile going over somewhat the idea of fasting and feasting. Because it's something that's so much part of our tradition, but in some ways, sometimes it, it's assumed that everybody knows what's going on, so no one talks about it. And sometimes things get missed. In the course of the, of the church year, there are a number of different fasts, and they vary somewhat in length. We're in one of the shortest of the church year, which goes from the 1st of August until the, uh, the 15th with the Feast of the Dormition. So it's a very short one. Several of them are about 40 days, which are, for example, the uh, Philip's Fast, which is in preparation for the birth of our divine Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the Nativity, the Feast of Christmas. We also have the Great Fast, the fast that precedes Pascha, Holy, uh, Holy East, Easter. There also are, uh, there's the fast that we have just come out of not that long ago, which is the Apostles' Fast. That is the one from just after Pentecost until the feast of Peter and Paul, hence the Apostles' Fast. There's also one other one that we tend not to think about. The feast before Pascha, the Great Fast, ends on Flowery Sunday, or also called Palm Sunday. That additional week from then until Pascha is another fast period, Holy Week. And we don't think about it, it's just sort of attached to the one and just, you know, go together. But there actually are two separate fasts. Uh, so, but one of the things that we have to think about is, what's the purpose of the fast? Why do we do this? So much of it is for us are given this chance to use these in the course of the church year to help control ourselves. It is so easy to fall into a rut, eating, drinking, doing the things that we do day in and day out, and doing without thinking. Instead of thinking about the fact that the food that we have on our table every day is a gift of God. Every morning when we wake up is a gift of God. Every breath that we take is God's gift to us. And it's so easy to get into a rut of just doing the same thing over and over that you don't even think about it. So the church gives us these opportunities to stop, think, and really consider what it is that we're doing and what God is doing in our lives. To get control of that and help control ourselves so that the body doesn't take over. To remind ourselves that we're created as spirit and body joined together, working together to get to heaven. That's the goal. The other aspect that people sometimes, I think, forget about is the, fe the feast. We get involved in thinking about the fast and what we have to do and give up and all those sort of things, all that sort of thinking. But we also need to think about the feast itself. Are you aware, for example, that during a feast season, you are not allowed to fast? If you're in a feast season, you are not supposed to be fasting through that period. Because this is a gift of God for us to look at all the things he's done for us, this wonderful gift that we have, and now we have this opportunity to uh, take advantage of that. God's giving us this gift. Fasting at that point is basically taking the meal set before us and saying, no, I don't really want it. And it misses the point that feasting and fasting are linked together, that they're both important because it reminds us of the generosity of God, of all the graces and love that he pours out on us each and every day. And then we give these opportunities to have these moments to think about all the generosity that he pours out on us. And that in so many ways is what the feasts are about, to remind us of God's generosity, of his love that he pours out on us. 
So as we enter into yet this additional fast season, as we prepare for the remission of the Holy Theotokos, let's think about all it is that God has given us. Think of the opportunity he gives us now to take time and control our bodily aspects so that we understand its purpose is, like everything, to bring us closer and closer to him and closer to his heavenly kingdom. If we do that, then we're truly worthy to say, Glory to Jesus Christ!